Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This should be a cool one to do because I get to do two things which is quite rare in one video. First I get to kind of put out a bit of a guide thing that will give people a kind of hidden achievement. It's achievement that doesn't as far as I can see even appear on the list of achievements in the game but it is there and you will get the points from it. And I can also talk a lot about lore which is something I also like to do so this, this should be really cool. So yeah basically there's a, an achievement that you can get in Ebonhawk and it's a pretty cool one. If you've been there you've probably already seen that there's a lot of books lying around called uh, the founding of Ebonhawk and their, their certain volumes. There are actually 20 of these books. And the achievement is to find all of them and I don't think you have to read all of them, you just have to find all of them and then you get an achievement called Well Read. So the footage on this video is, guess what, me going to every single volume in order. Um, it actually might not be efficient to do this in order because it keeps making you yo-yo across the city, uh, but these are the locations of all the books. If you want to be super efficient there might be a map out there somewhere that lets you just go from dot to dot and kind of sweep the city from left to right. But in any case, uh, it's really Really cool and actually these books tell the story as you might guess of how Ebonhawk came to be and in particular it talks a lot about a lot of characters we knew in Guild Wars 1. I just got some really cool stuff in there so uh, the footage is me running from place to place. Uh, I'm gonna play the actual story itself which I've read out for you guys thank me later and then we'll probably have about a five minute slot at the end where I can talk about some of the stuff I really liked about it uh, but I don't know how much time I'll get so we'll, we'll see how that goes but anyway uh, I'm gonna cut to me reading you the story. Uh, enjoy, uh, mute me if you don't want to actually hear the story you just want to see the locations, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys on the other side. See you in a bit. The Rise of Evenhawk, Volume 1, The Recall. A messenger from Ascalon arrived today, bringing the first word from home since the Vanguard were tasked with slowing the Char offensive years ago. The Vanguard's deeds reached the ears of the King. The forces have been recalled. There's a quiet relief that can be felt throughout the unit. Their long, hard-fought struggle is coming to an end. Away from the troops, Captain Gwen Thackeray seems concerned, an unspoken question on her lips. Though Ascalon is telling them to return, is their mission really complete, with Char still nearby? The troops leave a skeleton force to protect the Eye of the North as they set out in the black of night on their own return journey. The captain won't let the Char know, we've all but abandoned the North. Volume 2, Return to Ascalon the fanfare upon returning to the ruined city of Ascalon was indescribable. The vanguard has accomplished something the troops here in Ascalon have only dreamed of, victory against the Char in their own lands. King Adelburn's speech commemorating the efforts of Captain Gwen Thackeray and the vanguard moved both civilians and soldiers alike. The vanguard's efforts bring hope to a war-torn land. A week has passed since the return of the vanguard to Ascalon, and still the hero worship continues. Children run through the streets playing even vanguard and char. Volume 3, The New Assignment King Adelburn has called the city together to make an announcement. The vanguard are ordered to appear in full dress uniform. Uncertainty ripples throughout the unit, but this does not diminish their pride. The vanguard is being sent south to the mouth of the Crystal Desert, where a dire threat is rising. They're charged with building fortifications to protect against an enemy the King warns is coming. Captain Thackeray gracefully accepts the duty placed before her and the vanguard. Civilians look confused and worried. This new threat was not expected. Volume 4, A Question of Motive Today, a weaponsmith questioned the King's decision to send the vanguard back into harm's way so soon. In response, the King decreed that he should join the expedition to keep the vanguard properly armed. Before long, a baker, a leather crafter and a tailor and their families had also been ordered to join the caravan. Is this a sign of support from the King or an act to remove opposition from his sight? It's a question I dare not voice. Regardless, the even vanguard prepares to leave home once more, doing so without much complaint and with their usual efficiency. Volume 5, Unexpected Joiners The day the vanguard left Ascalon, that second time, was sad but proud. Civilians lined the streets to honour these heroes from the north. At the city gates, dozens of civilians from various trades met the unit to unexpectedly join them on their journey. Additional supplies were packed to accommodate them. So many people willing to leave with the vanguard and abandon all they'd ever known. Was it pride for the unit that spurred them on, or was it fear of their king? Volume 6. The Journey Begins Days turned to weeks as the vanguard marched south. 
Expected travel time to the destination had increased with the addition of the tradesmen and civilians, but no complaints were ever raised. I suspect that the even Vanguard soldiers are happy to have actual professional chefs to prepare their meals and armor smiths to keep their equipment in working order. Volume 7 A Suspicious Discovery Rigo Bolan of Lieutenant Kieran Thackeray's Eben Falcon's scout unit discovered an animal that had been torn to shreds by claws or teeth this morning. Not taking any chances, the vanguard is now on high alert. Civilians are told only that travelling in a new land can be dangerous and that they must be prepared for anything. They've been ordered to stay close to the caravan and not wander off by themselves. Several days have passed since we first discovered the shredded animal remains. Off in the distance, I can make out blurs that seem to be moving with us. Is something really out there? Or is this long trek making us paranoid? And more importantly, if something is out there, are we leading it or are we being led? I guess only time will tell. Volume 8, Return of the Enemy at dawn, our greatest fears were realised. A warband of Char ambushed us from the brush. The vanguard always believed their battle would be against the Char, just not this far south. Though the vanguard were used to the horrors of Char battles, the civilians travelling with them were not. Many broke off from the caravan, fleeing in terror as the monsters set upon us. We struggled to maintain our defences while returning those who had fled to the safety of the caravan. Questions danced in my mind during the fray. What were these Char doing here? Were they leftovers from the failed assault against Orr? Were they a herald of tragedies to come? Volume 9. Death of a Hero Corporal Diane Fermati pursued a young couple who had taken off. Unfortunately for them, the Char found them first. Unwilling to leave them to die, Diane rushed in against far greater numbers. Despite the odds, he kept the char at bay and held out long enough for help to reach them. Sadly, the effort cost Diane his life. Diane died a hero's death that day. We were by his side when he passed from this world into the mists. He wore a smile on his face as he drifted off, eased by his dying wish. Just one more drink of rum. Volume 10, Aftermath the craftsmen are afraid. They were not prepared to be assaulted while we moved. Perhaps they thought the threat in the south was a passing madness from King Adelburn, or did the king really know the horror that awaited us here? Did the civilians forget the terrible searing and the pain that came with it? Had the return of the Eben Vanguard lulled them into the false belief that they were safe? I pondered these questions as we continued to make our way south. Gwen continues to lead the caravan with firm resolve. Her speeches and encouragement lift the spirits. She has come so far since joining the vanguard as a frail child. She is a true successor to Captain Langmar. Volume 11. The journey continues. It's been more than a week since we first ran into the char. Their attacks continue, but at random intervals. Sometimes we have a day of peace, sometimes only hours. Defensive efforts are starting to take their toll, but the soldiers put up a brave front for those they are protecting. This morning's attack took the lives of two more brave vanguard soldiers. A small service was held for them, delaying our journey southward. Volume 12, End in Sight. We can finally see our destination, the mountain range that separates Ascalon from the Crystal Desert. That's where we'll find our new home. The very thought lifts our spirits. Kieran suggests we make for a mountain slope to the southwest, and Captain Gwen agrees. From there, we can move in and set up camp near the pass that leads through the desert. The trek will be dangerous. We must cross an open plain where we will be pounced upon by the char. Will we survive? Only the six know. Volume 13, Fateful Night. As night fell on what was to be our last day upon the plains, the massive assault began. There seemed to be no end to the murderous char. When one fell, two or three others were there to take its place. Dawn was barely breaking when Coro Sagewind called for people to break for the hills. Lawrence Crafton and Rigo Bolan stood guard while Coro cast the greatest illusion I would ever witness in this lifetime. A mystical army arrived from the north. Most of the char broke off and, in feral bloodlust, charged the illusion. Coro's trick brought us the time we needed to prepare for the next assault. Volume 15, Heart Loss. Coro approached the camp at dusk, her two defenders nowhere in sight. Her pace slowed and staggered. Blood dripped from her face and, blinded, she tripped over a rock. She fell before our makeshift camp. Coro had tapped her own life force so that we would make it. 
Kieran held her in his arms in her final moments. She reminded him of the last time she had created such an illusion to save their unit, years before. Her parting words bolstered our desire to survive. She truly was the heart of the Falcons, but the Vanguard would not let her death be in vain. Volume 16, The Future Gwen stirred the hearts of the survivors once more with talk of brighter tomorrows. The Char feared the Eben Vanguard in the north, and they would fear them in the south as well. The worry she saw in the eyes of her people was replaced with hope. The Eben Vanguard would no longer be protecting the people. It would be standing united with them to protect a common future. Volume 17, The Final Onslaught just as Koro foretold, the Char returned, furious at having been tricked into fighting an army that was never there. But the precious time she bought us had not been squandered. We stood ready for them. Unexpectedly, mad with grief, Nola raised an army of undead from beneath the earth, an army consisting of the town's previous occupants. Her forces created a wall against which the rushing waves of Char broke. Ignoring Kieran's order to fall back, she marched beyond our front lines. The lieutenant vaulted the barricade, attempting to reach her before the char could. To everyone's surprise, he hit her with his fist and knocked her out. Then he picked her up and rushed her unconscious form back behind our defensive position. Volume 18. Survival. The battle lasted for hours and we suffered many losses, but for every human that fell, a dozen char lay dead before them. We defined our existence on that day. With the battle finally over, we accounted for the dead. The baker and her son, who'd taken up arms along the front lines, were among those who did not live to see daybreak. The char have pulled back for now. We can still see them on the horizon, pacing and waiting. Captain Gwen has drawn the line, and we're not moving from this spot. But unlike before, we'll be ready for them, and we'll make them pay. The quarry attached to the mining town is said to be rich and deep, or so one of the craftsmen tells us. He and a couple of others are already preparing to retrieve stone to reinforce the town. Volume 19. Digging in. Private Casey Carpenter has joined the workers in the quarry, pulling up massive stones that are now being moved to replace our makeshift barricade at the front. The foundation for what will be a massive gate is being built. Other Vanguard soldiers have put down their arms for the time being to help the civilians reinforce our position. Slowly, our defences are taking form. Our losses have been great, but now we've all been forged in the crucible of battle. We are united under a singular purpose. The Rise of Ebonhawk, Volume 20, We Are Home. Gwen walks among the weary soldiers, thanking them for their tireless efforts. She's beginning to reorganise soldiers and civilians alike into teams, each working to establish our residence in this mountain pass. The look of uncertainty has all but vanished from everyone's eyes, replaced now with determination. People have come to terms with their fears, and now advance with a unified spirit. Captain Gwen Thackeray tells us that we are finally home, and we are ready to believe it. We won't flee from our home, our Ebon Hawk. Come, Char, we will meet you on the battlefield, but we will not move from here. The final line has been drawn. Kimmy's the historian. Okay, and I'm back. You know, listening to that, I feel like I might read stuff out, sounding a bit too hairy-fairy or dreamy. In any case, I, I will try and make this quick, but these are the kind of things that I really took away from this. If you've just listened to that and you literally had no idea who any of those characters were or, or what was going on, basically, in Guild Wars 1, uh, we had an expansion just before Guild Wars 2 came out called Eye of the North, and in Eye of the North, we learnt about a group of soldiers that were Ascalonian, but they'd gone north into Char Lands. These were the Eben Vanguard, and in the events of Eye of the North, we actually recruit them into the fold we save them and then they help us fight against the destroyers when that threat first becomes known then uh, after a while um, we had another update something called the war in Kryta, and this introduced some new characters that were in this Eben Vanguard namely Kieran Thackeray but a lot of other people these were uh, a group within the Eben Vanguard called the Eben Falcons which is very cool and you actually heard them get mentioned in that story there which I thought was awesome um, and basically you just kind of get to know this group of people not very well really but if you do pay a lot of attention in Guild Wars 1 you can see they have a lot of quotes and you do learn a lot about their personalities and it's really cool that now in this story which we'll talk about in a second they actually kind of go back to that and they do honor what those characters were like and I, I really do enjoy that I thought that was very cool of course the guy writing the story um, obviously it was like his journal I suppose as he was going through was called Kimmy's that's Kimmy's the historian he was a guy that was you could interact with in Guild Wars 1 he was the guy up in the Hall of Monuments and in fact in Guild Wars 2 he's still there I really like that he wrote this huge journal there's so much kind of story or information that's come out of this character and yet 
Plus, you can go and speak to him in game and he'll never reveal any of that, yet there's so much more depth to him. And I, I really like that. I like to kind of extrapolate that across a lot of the characters in the game and be like, oh, they probably know a lot more about the universe. They're just not sharing it. So I think that's quite cool. And that's kind of his records before he died or whatever. Uh, you will have noticed actually in Guild Wars 2, in the Hall of Monuments, there are still some other characters still up there. And when I first got there, when I first got in Guild Wars 2 to retrieve my rewards in the Hall of Monuments, I did kind of question, I was like, why are these characters here? Why is everyone else left? Why have you stayed here and just let yourself die? And this storybook actually does then explain why that skeleton force has been left there by Gwen, because she doesn't want the child to know that they've actually left the North, which is kind of a cool idea. And I also like that in a weird way, Gwen failed those people then, because then they all died up there, which is quite a sad tale, but you know, that kind of thing happens. So I think that's quite cool. And it was a nice explanation for why they're there. And you can go and speak to those. In fact, those are the only characters that are talked about in this story that you can then go and speak to, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I just kind of want to go through the story as it goes. I'm going to have to use extra footage at the end of this video, I can tell already, because there's so much I want to say. Um, but So we kind of open up and they explain, obviously, the skeleton force. And then Adelburn sends them all to the south, right? And he says, right, okay, you all have to go to the south now. And he describes that there's a new threat. This is probably the best mystery bit of this, um, because there's obviously... The question of what is Adelburn talking about? What is this threat? He, I don't think he specifically describes it as a new threat, but then when they are referring to this threat, they then later say it is a new threat. So the suggestion is Adelburn might have hinted at that himself, which is kind of weird. So he's sending them south, not telling them what threat it is that's there, just that there is one and that they need to defend themselves against it and they need to build up some kind of a fortification down there against it. And obviously that then turns out to be the char, but did Adelburn know that this was the Char that were down there and he deliberately sent the people there? I mean, how could he have known that the Char were there? There is the question raised of whether they're Char that are left over from the assault on Or, and I think that's an interesting idea. I really like that, actually, because this is the first time ArenaNet have specifically acknowledged that the Char attacked Or all those years ago. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to cut myself off there, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you only wanted the guide, then just uh, use this. There's all the footage for you. I'll be putting up another video with my thoughts, because guess what? I ended up speaking for about half an hour so I'll be in a different video thank you very much for watching enjoy your achievement it didn't ding there on the footage obviously because uh, I already had it it's called well read I'm pretty sure as I say it doesn't actually appear in the achievements list so it's a bit of an unlisted a bit of a secret achievement a real secret achievement so anyway there you go guys and I will see you uh, next time uh, hopefully for the next video if you want to discuss the book with me I'll see you next